and I can't wait to tell you what an impact you're already having on the students that I teach here in Omaha, Nebraska, halfway around the world. You all are such inspirations, and I'll tell you more about that later, and it's just incredible. So thank you for putting this together. Incredible work. And, uh, yeah, let's begin our session because uh, every second, every minute is uh, precious for us, and uh, our guest is here. So I, I request uh, Tom, and please introduce yourself as briefly as you can so that uh, we can find the uh, Plenty of time to ask you the questions. Please brief yourself. So I'm Tom Wisnand. I was uh, named the 2019 National uh, University System Sanford Inspirational Teacher of the Year in the United States. And um, I teach fourth grade and I absolutely love my job. I love interacting with kids. I love providing hope. And um, that, that's probably the briefest I can do. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's really our uh, uh, great day for us. In fact, and Venkatesh, are you there? Venkatesh, are you there? So try to ask the question, Sir. first question. Yes. So first of all, uh, greet uh, our uh, guest. Meet our guest, first of all. Hi, sir. Hey, yes. good, I guess good evening. Good evening, sir. My name is Gnana Venkatesh. I am studying 10th grade. My hobbies are playing volleyball, reading books, watching cricket. Very good. Very question, good. I love cricket. My question is, what are the subjects, subjects do your students learn at school? We learn reading, writing, and math, social studies, and science. Uh, we also use uh, study technology quite extensively. Um, and I would, I would love to talk with you some more about reading and writing specifically, uh, and possibly an interaction that my class can have with each and every one of you uh, to help help us learn and, and possibly get your expertise as well. Thank you for the Thank question. Thank you, sir. And here is my daughter, actually, and she is uh, uh, quite uh, excited to ask you a question. Hello, sir. Hello. Good, good evening. Good evening, sir. How are you? How are you? How are you, sir? I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm, I'm fine, sir. What would you like to do in your leisure time? What was the question again? I'm sorry. What would you like to do in your leisure time? Um, I like to play golf. I have two children, uh, an eight-year-old and a... Um, six-year-old, nine-year-old, and seven-year-old, and they, uh, we like to go hiking, and we like to um, ride bikes and things like that in my leisure time. Great question. Thank you. Okay, so let's, let's uh, shift our focus to the, uh, the another girl. Aishwarya, are you there? Quick. Aishwarya, turn on your video. Yes. So, yes. Please go ahead and go ahead and ask the question. Hi, sir. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, sir. How are you? I'm doing very well. I'm Thank fine. you. Sir, my question is, what are the tourist attractions of your country? Can you repeat that? What are the... What are the tourist attractions of your country? The attractions? Yeah, that tourist. Yes, sir. Um, um, <clears throat> we like to uh, go to um, oh, what, amusement parks. So we'll ride roller coasters or we will take thrill rides at these amusement parks. Uh, we like to go to natural sites. The Grand Canyon is a big tourist attraction. Um, of course, big cities, New York City and Broadway and LA, Los Angeles and uh, the movie scene. And uh, we have these giant redwoods in California and we like to go and see those. Um, um, uh, that's uh, the beaches, anything outdoors we like to go see. So. Those are some of the tourist attractions that we um, we like to do in the U.S. So yeah, and uh, very good answer indeed. And uh, Rishmita, are you there? Rishmita. Yes, sir. Hi, sir. Hi, how My are you? I'm fine, sir. How are you, sir? 
I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. My name is Vishnu Thakkar. It's my pleasure to ask this question. What are the qualities a student should obtain to become a global citizen? Mm, what an amazing, amazing question. My gosh. Um, I think that to be a global citizen, I think some of the most amazing skills you can have are to be empathetic and listening and trying to understand where somebody is coming from. I think that um, too often in our society today, we want to tell people how they should be or tell people what to believe. And I think your worldview will help you <clears throat> understand society better. Um, I think that listening, being empathetic, I think that problem solving, trying to find a compromise and reach a middle ground is another life skill that um, students really should try to work on. Um, I think taking in information, reading, being able to um, decide what is true information and what may be misinformation would be very, very uh, worthwhile. So but I think the biggest one is really understanding where somebody else is coming from, that idea of empathy and understanding. That would be the, the number one uh, skill that I think people need in order to be a, a true global citizen. What an amazing question. I love that question. Thank you, sir. Let's move on to the next uh, final slide. Mm. Yes. Uh, Hamasandria, carry on. Hi, sir. Hi. My name is Sandria. Hello. How are you, sir? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me as part of your class today. What do the most of your students want to become when they grow up? Um, they want to be YouTubers or video game players. <laughs> um, they, a, a lot of them want to be, um, you know, doctors and lawyers. Um, but what I hear a lot of are professional athletes, YouTubers, and Hi. video game engineers. That's you Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Great question. Thank you. Okay, next, uh, yeah, okay. Prasun Amba, carry on. Prasun Amba, we have very little time left. Are you there? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead and ask the question. Hi. Hello. Yes. My name is Prasun Amba, 10th grade. Nice to meet you, sir. It's wonderful to meet you. Thank you for being here. What do you like in India? What do I like in India? Yes, sir. Uh, I think the diversity of India is absolutely amazing to me. Um, I have never been to India. I would love to visit India. I think that the, um, the differences in climate all the way from uh, the southern tip all the way up into the mountainous region in the north uh, is just absolutely astounding that one country can have so many diverse climates. I think that uh, the diversity in thought and the uh, diversity in ideas is also very, very rich. And um, the food, oh my gosh, the spices and the, the um, different tastes that I think Indian food, and this is just from the American side. It's never been really there but I, I can just imagine what it would be like in person. So what a great question. Thank you. Okay, uh, yeah, let's, let's move on to the another participant. Uh, Fazil Nessa, are you there? Fazil Nessa. So Fazil Nessa, do you have any question? Yes, next. Uh, um, yes, Eshwant. Eshwant. Yes, Eshwant, go ahead. Hi, sir. This is Ashman, studying ninth grade. Hi, thank you for being here. What do we do to improve our spoken English skills? Um, just practice, practice, practice. Listen, uh, speak as much as you can. Um, 
even if even if you're in a, a one language situation, make yourself think in English. Make yourself process the information in English. Um, I think the more you use languages, the more powerful they become. So um, I find myself studying languages as well, and that's that's what I have to do. My kids speak English, my wife speak English, and I I take the words that they say and put them into a different language and just use it as much as you can. Great question. Thank you, sir. You bet. Chandra, are you there? Hi, sir. Hello. Hello. My name is Chandra. Good to meet you. Thank you for being here. Could you please tell us about your country? About my country? Yeah. Um, yes, that is what we last time. So the United States is pretty diverse as well. Um, we have the East Coast, which is um, where predominantly the US was founded. And then we kind of expanded to the West Coast. Um, uh, it's it's an interesting time in the United States. It is a very interesting time in the United States for a number of reasons. Politically, um, it, it's, it's, I would say, fairly unstable, unfortunately. Um, and um, we're trying to figure a lot of things out as far as racial diversity. What does that look like moving forward? We're trying to figure out how our society um, can function and be cohesive and how we can care for other people. Um, how we can show that we care for other people. Um, I don't know if that's the direction you wanted, and maybe that's too much information, but um, that's, that's about the United States. Um, it's full of wonderful, amazing people. Right now there's fires on the West Coast um, and in the mountains, um, big fires. And so the, the smoke is blowing across the United States and causing our skies to be hazy and foggy on um, people with breathing um, problems or are suffering a little bit more. Um, but just like everybody else, we're still dealing with the coronavirus and we wear masks everywhere we go. And um, it's an interesting time in, in the United States for sure. Thank you. Sir. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you for the question. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, another girl, actually, the girl who has asked you uh, a question and she wants to ask one more question. Please go ahead. Sir, what do you think about the role of English in the world? Do I think what? I'm sorry. What do you think about the role of English language in the world? English language. Repeat that one more time. I'm so sorry. What do you think about the role of English language in the world? The role of English in the world. Yes, sir. Yeah. I think that's a very interesting question uh, for a couple of reasons. One, um, I, I speak English, so I think it's wonderful. But at the same time, I don't know if it's, if it's good that we as a world um, all demand or want to speak English. I think it's wonderful that the world has different languages. And I, um, I think it's great that one language uh, helps us communicate this. Um, and um, I think it's important. I think it's important that you get as many understandings as you possibly can. And so if you want to study English, I think that is absolutely marvelous. If, if people want to study Spanish or Mandarin or uh, some other language, I think that's magnificent. I think English is a great vehicle to understand other people. Um, so thank you and thank you to your amazing, amazing teacher for um, uh, helping you get a grasp of English so that we can understand each other and I can understand to where you're coming from more. Um, Thank good you, sir. For your teacher and good for you for learning a different language. I think it's amazing. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you so much. You bet. Arifa, are you there? Arifa, do you have any question to ask? To ask? Arifa? Arifa? Yes. And uh, so, meanwhile, yes. And uh, meanwhile, could you please uh, give a message to our students? Because we have very little time in the after, maybe. Uh, so, meanwhile, uh, could you please uh, give a message to our students? So, sure. this is actually a pandemic. 
Yes, my students, in fact, they have never experienced Zoom classes before in their lifetime. Maybe in the future also, they, may, they might not experience the, the, this kind of uh, situation in my country. And this is the first time actually they are experiencing the Zoom classes uh, right from their home. And mm. so only 50% of the students only attending the Zoom classes. The other 50% are still away from the class. And uh, some of them are not interested and some of them actually are not accessible to the internet. So they have their own issues, in fact. So mm. meanwhile, could you please uh, give me a message? And uh, so what should they do from here onwards until their examination starts uh, in this academic year? So could you mm. please uh, give me a suggestion to do our students in this regard? Yeah, absolutely. Um, First of all, you being on this call, I think is absolutely amazing. The fact that you take your time, and I know it's late at night over there, later at night in the evening, and you all take your time and you're engaged in learning is wonderful. Um, so there's one kind of um, <clears throat> way that I like to break things down, and it's by using what's called a SMART goal. And so this is very low tech. It's just a piece of paper, but it's a smart goal. And so anytime you want to be highly successful, people really set these goals um, and they're very specific goals. So if you want to um, pass your examinations with say the grade of A or the highest grade, write that down on a piece of paper and put that someplace where you see it every day so that you're reminded every day of this goal. Um, and it will be sometimes boring and it will be sometimes difficult, but every day you have to be reminded of what your goal is and where you want to be. Um, and that's very, very important. So our brains start working in that way. Uh, make it as specific as possible. The next one is you want your goal to be measurable. You want to say, I, you can't say, I just want to get better in English or I want to get better at math. Assign a very specific value to that. Say, I want to pass my examinations with the highest grade or with the second highest grade or whatever your goal is, but make it very, very measurable. If you make it too general, it's easy to then say, yes, I've met my goal and I'm done. Um, but if you make it very specific, you have a very, very good measure of where you are. Um, so make it, make it specific and make it measurable. The third thing is making it achievable. If you are really, really, really having a difficult time, then maybe getting the second highest grade is wonderful. If you are not having a really tough time, maybe getting that highest grade is absolutely achievable, but make it realistic, make it achievable so that you don't feel like you're wasting your time. You have to be able to get where you want to be. And if your goal is not achievable, then you might want to look at setting a different goal or another goal of some sort. So there's the S specific, be specific with your goal, make it a measurable goal so that you know when you hit that target or when you reach that level of success. Make it achievable so that you can reach it. The third one is relevant. Make it relevant. Right now, this is an amazing, amazing time in education all over the world. And your teacher has done such a fantastic job of finding resources and keeping, trying to keep you all engaged. But make this goal relevant. If you care a great deal about your education, then make this goal about your education. Make it relevant to what you want to achieve. And the last goal is to make it time bound. That's the T, that's where SMART comes from. Make it time bound. And it sounds like at the end of the year, it's a natural time bound situation. You have these examinations coming up and so you will know when you get to see if you met your goal or when you meet your goal. You've put in the time. You've made a specific goal. You've made it measurable so you know where you want to be. You can do it. It's achievable because you've, you know yourself. You know where you want to be. You know that it's relevant. It's going to be important to your life. 
and you know that it is time bound because by the end of the school year, you will have to know what if you've met your goal or not. So that is one way that I would really, really encourage you to stay engaged with this situation. Write down your academic goal and put it someplace where you can see it every day as a reminder and then work towards those goals. Um, and I said this before and I'll say it again, do something every day, no matter how little it is to work towards that goal. And if you have a day where you don't do something where you're working towards that goal, make sure that before you go to bed, you do something to work towards that goal. Maybe I love the question about learning English. How do you learn English? Maybe you, you translate a little bit of a book that you're reading into some English into some English words just in your head right before you go to bed if you haven't had time to practice. But what an amazing, amazing time. So I would encourage your students to use this SMART goal framework if they could to be successful in those examinations. That is really amazing. Amazing message that my students ever get. I think uh, we really follow. I think we do follow the message in our day to day life. And I hope that the, my students uh, had a great opportunity today to get this wonderful message from you. And uh, so, if there is anything that you can say and you can share with my students, because we have very little time left. I would love it. And I've talked with you a little bit about this, but right now you all are such huge inspirations to these nine and 10 year old students in America right now. We are in the middle of creating online books about animals. And I would love if my students could send these books to you all and have you all read them, look them over, use your English skills, use your grammar skills, provide my students feedback Right now, these students are absolutely in love with the idea that somebody from across the world is going to look at their material and then provide feedback to them. So if you all would be willing to continue being an inspiration to, to the students here in the United States, that would be amazing. You all are doing such amazing work over there and you don't even know what an inspiration you all are. It is absolutely incredible the power that you all have with the students here in the United States. So thank you very much. And if, if you're willing to do that, it would be very much appreciated. Thank you, thank you so much. I, I would love to get those uh, books to, to my country and especially my school. I will, I will definitely ensure you that my students will give the feedback to the book that your students have prepared. It's really our privilege and it's our pleasure also to share our thoughts with your feedback. And we would definitely love to read. And uh, please make sure that uh, you send the book uh, as early as possible. We are so excited to give the feedback. And uh, I will. And yes, I think I am really thankful to you for having a, a very good opinion about uh, our activities and uh, the and, and my country yesterday and, and my students yesterday. And uh, so we are so thankful. And let us uh, uh, continue our collaboration and not just in one Zoom class and uh, let us do it uh, and in many ways, whatever the way that is possible. And uh, I don't think that you are living far away from us actually, but we are living in a global village. So in a global mm -hmm. village, we can share many things. So it, I, it feels like that you are living uh, just uh, to my neighboring house, in fact. So I am able mm -hmm. to share my thoughts with you. And just like a neighbor. So let us collaborate and let us do so many things uh, that uh, whatever we can do uh, for the betterment of our students. Yes, thank you. Could I could I ask one more thing? Could I have everybody turn on their camera so I could take a picture to share with my friends here in the United States? Um, one more thing, yes. And I request all my students. I'm sorry to do that. I should have done that at first when everybody had them on. No problem, no, no problem. And I request all the students to turn on your videos because uh, our guest speaker is going to capture a photo and uh, 
I request all the participants to turn on your videos. Turn on, turn on, turn on your videos. Turn on your videos. Yes, I think, yes, please. Rishmita, Yogesh, Arif, Arifa, Arifa, Keshwa, Yogesh, Sai. Please turn on your videos. Keshwa, Keshwa, turn on your videos. Keshwa, turn on your videos. Javarat, Arifa. You all are amazing. Thank you so much. All right, here we go. One, two, three. I'll get another one here. Well, we'll do it this way. One, two, three. Oh, thank you so much. So, Wonderful. Yeah, uh, yeah. So on behalf of all my students, I would like to um, extend my wholehearted uh, maybe thankfulness to you and uh, for uh, uh, actually for sparing your valuable time that too on Sunday. Sunday I think you mm -hmm. have many things to do in fact. So thank you so much again and uh, for accepting my request and to interact with my students. It's really it has been a really wonderful day and uh, for my students and the KJS3 are you there and do, do you want to ask any question because uh, it seems that uh, you got disappointed a bit for not to be giving you any uh, chance to pose the question. And uh, because, uh, yes, Teja, are you there? Teja? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, I think, yeah. yeah. Please, please go ahead and ask the question because you will be the last girl, I think, to pose the question because the time is ticking. Please go ahead and ask the question. Hi, sir. Hi, how are you? I am fine, sir. How are you, sir? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me in your class today. This has been so much fun. Yes, sir. Could you please explain about American flag, sir? The American flag. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, sir. So there's the red and the white and the blue and the stars. So there's 50 stars because we have the 50 states. And there's the red and the white. And the red is uh, symbolic of the blood that people have shared for... Um, uh, the freedoms that we have um, and the blue and the red I, the blue and the white I should know but I'm very ashamed that I don't have that understanding <laughs> of what the the red and the, the the blue and the white mean I'm so sorry so I will look it up really quick oh my gosh I am so embarrassed. Thank you so much for the question and making me learn this. Not, not, not at all. I think we don't think so. Oh yes, <laughs> no problem. The white, the white symbolizes the purity, um, the purity and and strength that the United States has, and the blue symbolizes the vigilance that we need to have as a country to always watch um, and stay strong as a country as well. So my gosh, I love the fact that you asked that question and I can learn right alongside of you. I'm sorry, I didn't know about my own flag. My gosh. No problem, no problem. I think Thank you for answering my question, and sir. You're welcome. And so are there any girls and boys who are still want to ask the question because uh, only five minutes more, time is ticking. So are there any girls and boys still want to ask any question? Any supplementary question? Sir? Yes, any more? Hello. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yes, go ahead. Hello. Can you explain about your education system? Oh, yeah, I will try my best. So um, kids, um, students start school uh, about five or six years old in kindergarten. There is some, it's called preschool, which is a little bit below that, four or five years old. Um, and then um, eight and nine year olds go to uh, third grade, fourth grade, there's first grade, second grade. After you start kindergarten at five or six years old, you just kind of move up, move up, move up um, until you get into sixth and seventh grade, which is about 11 and 12 years old. Uh, and that's middle school. And then you go to high school, which is ninth grade. So you're looking at 14, 15 years old uh, until you get to 12th grade, which is um, your senior year or your last year of high school, uh, you're 17 or 18 years old, and then you go into college 
Um, and there's private colleges, there's public colleges. Um, it's expensive to go to college here in the United States. Um, there's um, private schools. If you want to go to a religious school or a, a, they're called charter schools here. So there's different paths to take in the education system in the United States. Um, and that's, that's kind of how it works. It's, it's different than most other countries from what I understand. Great question. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Do you have any other specific questions? No, sir. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. And again, I think uh, Mr. My daughter is going to ask a question, actually. Yes. Sir. Explain about my school. Sure. Um, I have, <clears throat> excuse me, I have 24 kids in my class right now. Um, my school has preschool, excuse me. <clears throat> we have preschool through grade five. There's about 493 students in my school. So there are about four kindergartens, four first grade classes, four second grade classes, all the way up to fifth grade. Um, we have, uh, you know, PE and music is what are called specials. And so uh, we have the ability to have kids play instruments if they want to play an instrument. Um, we do art lessons um, and it's, it's, it's fun. We have a good time. Kids enjoy being there and we enjoy having the kids there. So right now it's different because of the pandemic. Everybody wears a face mask to school all the time. Um, they can take it down or remove it if they want to take a drink or if they need to eat a snack or have lunch, of course. Um, we remove it when we're out on the playground for no longer than 15 minutes. We have to hand sanitize whenever we go into a room or come out of a room. Um, so it's a little bit different, but um, it's great to be in school. Thank you so much. And uh, just uh, all the uh, students, uh, Listen to me carefully. We have only five minutes left, and if anyone is interested, you can post. And but uh, I think I request, uh, uh, yes, Tom, actually, you please answer this, to this question as briefly as possible because uh, we have very uh, short time left. But very few minutes. Left. Yes, I think. Uh, yes, any any step is interested. Sir. Yes. How do you deal with the students who are not native language speakers? Mm, what a magnificent question. Um, there's a lot of pictures that we can use and um, we use a lot of uh, <laughs> empathy and understanding and patience. Um, and I try to understand what it would be like to be in a country where I don't speak the language and I'm trying to communicate to um, somebody what I need and what I want. Um, I find that a lot of concepts, whether that be mathematic concepts or scientific concepts are true no matter what language you speak. Um, and so it's a matter of understanding each other. And so that's where that idea of being empathetic and looking for uh, an understanding instead of trying to um, have an upper hand, I guess, in education comes. Um, there's a lot of patience. And so just trying to understand what it is that I can do to make them successful is, is my goal. Thank you, sir. Great question. And again, I think very, yes, the time is almost up. So I think, uh, so on behalf of all my students, uh, one more time, uh, uh, I'm really thankful to you and I extend uh, my heartful thanks, thanks to you and uh, for uh, sparing your valuable time and uh, we really enjoyed this session so much and uh, so what is more interesting is that uh, so our collaboration actually between you and your school and my school is not going to be ended with this Zoom class. It's going to be continued, I think, in future, as long as uh, our, uh, uh, maybe our thoughts and our interests are uh, warranted for the students. So let us continue our collaboration and we wish to get uh, your students' books uh, and for the feedback. Yeah.
we love to do it so thank you so much again and enjoy your day and have a great day so thank from you. all the students of india and from my class here. so i wish you uh, and all the best and we will see you one more time again bye for now yes please thank you guys have a great sunday